Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So today was a big day for Harley Davidson. They announced their 2022 lineup. The Street Glide ST, uh, that is the one that I was super excited about. Uh, I saw the announcement happen today. Now, I actually was planning on watching this kind of sneaking at work and watching the whole unveil um, in my office, but uh, I just so busy and lost track of days. And then I opened up Instagram as I was busy uh, getting some work done. And uh, I saw somebody had the lowrider ST in there and uh, I quickly closed Instagram. So I'm like, oh, the, the, it was today and I don't want to know anymore. Uh, and just kind of had my own reaction to it. So uh, I couldn't reserve myself. I did end up going to the website just to kind of breeze through the product line. And when I saw the Street Glide ST, it was, I need to go to the dealership immediately and trade my bike in and get this thing because it's totally, totally sick looking. And I still think that, but I ended up pretty quickly being disappointed I went as fast as I could from wanting this motorcycle to just being annoyed by this motorcycle. The reason I'm annoyed by this is that I would love to see the aluminum frame, the liquid cooled uh, Revolution Max, the 1250 thrown onto a performance bagger. I'm going to go out and say I will be buying whatever the Harley Davidson Road Glide Special, I don't know what they're going to call it, but their performance version with all of this technology built into it. I just think the opportunity was now to use that power plant on a sport touring bike and just blow the Challenger right out of the water. This is not that. This is the 117. Cool. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a ripper for sure. There's a lot of opportunity to build off this platform. I just don't know where this bike fits in terms of the whole lineup. It's not that much different from a Street Glide Special. You get the bigger motor, you have the opportunity to spend a boatload of money on an Olin suspension, which you could still just put, I'm assuming the parts will fit directly on the Street Glide Special, and obviously this all applies to the Road Glide too, but do you spend $29,000? And honestly, by the time you're done with the options, because you can't not have the options, you get the color, you get hard ERS, you're 34 call it $33,000 out the door. It's it's funny because now I think that that Street Glide ST, uh, it's a cheaper CVO and for an extra five grand to get the 117, by the time you option this up, pricing your, so 30, so about three grand for the 117. Okay, here we have Street Glide Special ST CVO. Why would you not just buy it? Everybody, I feel like the ST is just going to cannibalize all these CVO sales. And also, why would you buy the special if you can get the 117? All right. So, I don't know, guys. I mean, I am very impressed with the uh, uh, Lowrider ST. I think that's an awesome, awesome motorcycle. If that existed when I bought my Heritage, I would argue that I probably, yeah, at 21000 uh, that's pretty similar to what my Heritage was priced I probably would have gone this route. 22000 for the color. You start kind of going up there in price a little bit. But for what you get out of this thing in terms of the, uh, you get the, the speakers, you get the fairing. Um, it, this would have been a really nice bike to take on a long road trip for just like a solo four or five day trip. Throw on like a nice big bag on the back. Uh, this is This is a really interesting bike. Uh, I like it a lot, and I probably would have bought this. Actually, I can pretty much guarantee I would have bought this. That black and bronze is a killer color scheme, and uh, yeah, I would have bought this bike, no doubt. I don't think I'm going to take my heritage and trade it in for this bike. I don't know. All right, so that is my kind of my review, I guess, of the 2022 lineup. In all reality... Uh, I know the times that we're in right now, and I think that Harley Davidson is just trying to get through it. I don't doubt that maybe there was some ambition, and maybe even still is some ambition, for a Revolution Max bagger, and that just simply due to uh, part shortages and demand on the uh, Pan America, that maybe it just the timing wasn't right. But I also feel like if that was the case, that they would have just not released that bike, because... 
in my opinion, you have the Sportster S, which everybody just ranted and raved about as far as the motor, and that was released after the Revolution Max uh, uh, Pan America. And I just feel like the time is now to capitalize on all of this positive press. I mean, they just won the uh, a bunch of accolades for the touring bike uh, or the adventure touring bike as uh, being the best ADV bike on the market in like their first attempt. And the Sportster S, uh, again, rave reviews from everybody you saw talk about it. And I don't think you're going to get the same rave reviews out of the ST touring bikes that they could have got if they would have just waited until they had the ability or desire or drive to do this better with the Revolution Max. And I don't know. I'm a little bit disappointed in it, which is funny because, again, I, I saw this bike earlier today and was like, take my credit card. I, I need to buy this motorcycle. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm at the point now where I just don't feel all that compelled to go to the dealership. Um, and that's, I think, Harley's problem right now is getting people to come back and prying the old bikes out of their hands. And I'm not sure that they're doing that right now, but that's my take. I'm just one dope. Uh, so let me know in the comments down below. What do you dopes think? Um, do you think this is all a home run or is it just kind of another uh, just get through it year where maybe we see some things trickled out later this year? But um, I feel like the cheapening of the ST brand may have happened today uh, by not having the Revolution Max in there. But that's my opinion. So either way, I'm very impressed with their presentation of data this year. I think they did a really good job. And uh, again, the times that we're in are the times that we're in. And I think that every company is doing their best to package content that isn't uh, just a Debbie Downer type content. So uh, with that being said, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.